In this video, I'm going to give you the tools and the process to perfect your Spanish pronunciation through speech shadowing. Empecemos. Hola amigos, Jim here from Spanish and Go, your resource for learning real world travel Spanish. And today I want to give you the process that I use to work on my Spanish pronunciation. Now I've been learning Spanish for the last 10 years and I think I've gotten pretty good and I want to help you improve as well. Now accents and pronunciation are something we've talked about on this channel before, especially in our video about how to not sound like a gringo. I'll leave a link to that somewhere here. But in this video, I want to show you my exact process for improving my own pronunciation so that you can copy it and improve yours. Now, one of the most difficult things about improving your pronunciation is that most people tend to think that they're average or above average with their pronunciation, just as most people think that they're at least average, if not above average drivers. But the problem here is really that you don't hear yourself speaking a language the same way other people do. So let's start with the basics. Now, first off, you're really going to want to focus on mastering your vowel sounds. In Spanish, there are very few silent letters. It's really only the H that you have to worry about. And if you cover your vowels and you have those down pat, then most words are just pronounced the way they they look like they should be pronounced. Unlike English, in Spanish you don't have weird things like PH in phone or KN in night. If it doesn't sound like it should be there, it's not there. Of course, there are exceptions as there are in any language. For example, you don't say pizzicologo, you say psicologo. But in my opinion, Spanish pronunciation is easier to understand than English pronunciation, at least in regards to how you should say things. So fortunately, the vowels in Spanish are the same ones we have in English. They're just pronounced differently. So there's A, E, I, O, U. Notice as you go through that order, your mouth starts from big and goes to small. A, E, I, O, U. So just keep that in mind when you're pronouncing these vowels. Now you can be sure you're pronouncing these correctly by going to our website. We left a tool there where you can listen to the Spanish alphabet and practice with that. But I'm going to give you some tools coming up so you can practice and compare your pronunciation with that on our website. Next up, as you are practicing your Spanish, I want you to write down any words that you find difficult to pronounce. I take notes all the time of different Spanish words that I hear that I want to save for later or practice. And I basically have different categories. One is just for vocabulary, I know how to pronounce it, I just want to save it for later so that I can look it up or remember it or add it to my Anki stack and then I can practice and make sure that I've really mastered uh, the use of that word. But another category I keep is words that are difficult for me to pronounce. And I add to this list a lot, especially when Maya and I are recording our podcast, Learn Spanish and Go. If you're ready for real Spanish conversations, then you should definitely check out the podcast. It's all in Spanish. And I mention this because every time I do a video by myself in English, someone comments, why didn't you just say it all in Spanish? Well, not everybody is at the level where they can understand full Spanish conversations. So if you are, check out the podcast. So in preparing for this video, I grabbed a few words from my difficult words to pronounce list so that I could walk you through my process of improving. I wrote down ejecutivo, executive, envejecer, to age, and acontecimiento. 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 Now, oftentimes you'll find that you can say a word out of context, just fine, but when you put it in a sentence, that's where the trouble begins. And that's the same thing for me. So I'm gonna show you how you can work through that. But first, you're gonna wanna know how to pronounce the word as is. Fortunately, there's a resource that shows you exactly how a native Spanish speaker would say pretty much any word. So all you need to do is copy the word that you wanna practice and pop it into the unfortunately named Spanish Dict. Com. For this example, I'm going to grab the word that's giving me the most trouble right now. So you can just go ahead and copy and paste that word into Spanish Dict, and you'll be taken to a page where you can read the definition, see different examples, and listen to the pronunciation. I've never actually even gone to this tab before, but if you click here... Acontecimiento. A. Con. T. C. Mien. Isn't that awesome? A native Spanish speaker will pronounce the word 
as is and then slow it way down. But remember, as I mentioned before, it's one thing to just copy someone, it's another to hear yourself copying them. That's how you're really going to be able to tell how close you're matching the the standard, basically, the person you're trying to copy, a real native Spanish speaker. So I'm gonna go ahead and listen again, and then I'm gonna make my own recording to compare. Acontecimiento. A con te si mien to. Okay, let's give it a shot. So I'm gonna pull up a voice recording app on my phone, and then try recording. Acontecimiento. 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 And I'm going to listen back. Acontecimiento. 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 And I'm going to compare it to the standard. Acontecimiento. A con te si mien to. I'm going to try again and then I'm going to copy every time she slows a part of the word down. Acontecimiento. Acontecimiento. A. A. Con. Con. Te. Te. Si. Si. Mien. Mien. To. To. Acontecimiento. I think that was pretty good. But again, this is just going to show you where any glaring issues in your pronunciation are. And as I mentioned earlier, I'll leave a link to all the resources in the description of this video. Now the next step is using it in context. So fortunately, if you can't find an example from a movie or a show that you heard this word in, you can go to the examples tab on the Spanish Dict website. Here's a good one. And it looks like they even have an audio example. En realidad, mi acontecimiento va a ser un poco diferente. That sounds a little computerized, but I think that will be good enough. So I'm just going to go ahead and try to copy what he says. En realidad, mi acontecimiento va a ser un poco diferente. En realidad, mi acontecimiento va a ser un poco diferente. Back to the app. En realidad, mi acontecimiento va a ser un poco diferente. En realidad, mi acontecimiento va a ser un poco diferente. In realidad, mi acontecimiento va a ser un poco diferente. And listen back. In realidad, mi acontecimiento va a ser un poco diferente. I tripped up. In realidad, mi acontecimiento va a ser un poco diferente. Better the second time. In realidad, mi acontecimiento va a ser un poco diferente. When you're going through this exercise, pay close attention to the words that are tripping you up and practice them at a slower speed and slowly build up to a faster version. As a musician, this is all I ever really did when I was practicing my instrument. If I wanted to learn a section of music, I would take that section and slow it way down. As long as I could play it perfectly at a slower speed, then I could gradually increase the speed until I could match the recording that I was going for. I recommend you do the same with language. And coming up, I'm going to give you a tool where you can slow down any audio and gradually speed it up in that same way. Now I'm going to show you an example of speech shadowing. This is an awesome technique that you can use with pretty much any audio or video that you hear, and it's a great way to not only improve your pronunciation, but also your fluency. So the steps for speech shadowing are like this. First, you're going to want to find something that you want to shadow. Find an actor or a YouTuber, what have you, that you really like the sound of their voice, and especially a topic that they're talking about. Go ahead and find a piece of audio that's worth copying, at least to you, right? Something that you're interested in, so that if you ever want to talk about this subject, well, you have the experience of maybe shadowing someone who talks about the same sort of thing that you like. This is gonna keep it interesting, and it's gonna give you the motivation to really nail this down. To show you how it's done, I picked a sample from one of the videos on my friend Alan's YouTube channel. As a YouTuber, I picked a section of his video that I thought would be worth mastering, so I'll show you that section right now. So I'm here on YouTube, and there's a few things that you should know about the controls on YouTube, because you can practice most of this right here on the platform. So by using the shift, comma, and period keys together, you can slow down or speed up the audio. You can also use the left or right arrows to jump back or forward in time. 
This is really useful because you'll want to jump back and practice these phrases over and over again until you get them down. So this is the part I want to copy. No olvides tampoco suscribirte al canal para seguir viendo más videos como este y darle like al video, compartirlo con otros emprendedores si te ayudó y si crees que también puede ayudarles a ellos. So that was pretty fast. What you're going to want to do is copy down what you're going to mimic. That way you have it in front of you and you can practice along a little easier that way rather than having to memorize multiple sentences at once. On YouTube, if there are subtitles available, especially if the author created the subtitles, they should be pretty accurate. Otherwise, if there's good audio on the video, YouTube sometimes does a decent job at creating automatically generated subtitles. You're going to want to compare to see how they do if you go this route. But I'll show you how you can do this fairly quickly. Alan doesn't have subtitles that he created himself here, but if you go here to the three dots below the video, you can go to open transcript and it's going to open up this transcript box right here. Now, I think it comes with the timestamps on. You're probably going to want to turn those off for this example and you can just go ahead and copy the part that you want to reproduce. Go ahead and copy that text and paste it into somewhere that's convenient for you. You could write this down in a notebook or just put it in a text editor. I already went through this process to make sure that I had written down everything that Alan said in his video that I want to mimic. So let's just go back to the video quick and make sure that I've got everything. No olvides tampoco suscribirte al canal para seguir viendo más videos como este y darle like al video, compartirlo con otros emprendedores si te ayudó y si crees que también puede ayudarles a ellos. Looks pretty good. Another tip if you want to make sure that you're able to go back to that section of the video is to click the share tab and then click the box that allows you to include the timestamp in the link. So just go to share and click this box here and copy. That's going to give you the link that'll go straight to that part of the video for your reference. I went ahead and copied that here in my text document. So if you want to be able to go straight back to that spot, you can copy that link and paste it directly into your browser and it'll take you to that spot. No olvides tampoco suscribirte al canal para seguir. Perfect. Now what you're going to want to do is practice saying this section out loud a few times to get warmed up and eventually move that speed up to regular speed. Again, you can do this in YouTube, but I find it a little more convenient to have the audio in a different player so that I can loop it in a way that's easier to practice with. I recommend using a piece of software called Transcribe exclamation point. If you want to use a YouTube clip for practicing this technique, you can use something like 4K Downloader, which allows you to download videos from YouTube. And then from there, you can cut the video down and just import that into Transcribe. And that's what I did here. So I have the audio in Transcribe now and only the section that I want to practice. No olvides tampoco suscribirte al canal para seguir viendo más videos como este. The great thing about having the audio in this program is I can very easily slow down the audio to whatever speed I want. So what I'm going to do is pull up the text so I could practice along with this text at a slower speed. You can see on the screen here there's the quick option for 70%. That might be a little too slow. You can actually make finer adjustments down here but we'll give this a shot. No olvides tampoco suscribirte al canal para seguir viendo más videos como este y darle like al video. No olvides, no olvides tampoco, tampoco suscribirte al canal, al canal para, para seguir, seguir viendo más videos, más videos como, este, como este, y este y darle like al video. video. No, no olvides, olvides tampoco suscribirte al canal, canal para, para seguir, seguir viendo, viendo más videos, videos como este, este y darle like, like al video. video. No olvides tampoco suscribir, suscribirte no olvides tampoco suscribirte al... You don't have to practice with the audio right away. You want to get the rhythm down. So listen to the audio a few times and then practice it on your own until you feel comfortable to practice along with the audio or video that you're working with. No olvides tampoco suscribirte al canal para seguir viendo más videos como este y darle like al video. No olvides tampoco suscribirte al canal para seguir viendo más videos como este y darle like al video. Another thing I like about this program is you can just select the part of the audio that's causing you the most trouble. So I'm going to go ahead and select this and I can loop just that section. Para seguir viendo más videos como este y darle like 
al video para, para seguir viendo más videos como este y darle like al video. Ellen could be a rapper. So you get the idea. Take each part that's causing you trouble, examine it, listen to it back over and over again, grab the sections that give you the most trouble and slow them down until you really have that mastered. So I've shown you how to pronounce difficult words and how to use speech shadowing to improve your fluency and your pronunciation. I'll leave a link to all the resources I used in this video in the description so you can use them for yourself. No olvides tampoco suscribirte al canal para seguir viendo más videos como este y darle like al video. And remember, el camino es el destino. The journey is the destination. Nos vemos pronto.